good day everyone we are group four once again and today we will be discussing the myth of the gaijus swing by plato let's start with one of the most famous discussions of justice that occurs in book two of plato's the republic where glaucon plato's older brother begins with arguing that to do injustice is by nature good to suffer injustice evil but that the evil is greater than the good. He said that by nature, humans are selfish and unjust and that justice is not good in itself. Instead, justice is a consequential good, meaning that it is only valued for the beneficial consequences. For example, being just will give you a good reputation. Here, Glaucon introduces his view that it is better to be unjust than to be just. Sinabi niya na dahil lamang sa mga nagawang batas kung kaya't napipilitan ang lahat na ikompromiso ang kanilang natural na pagnanais na maging makasarili at hindi makatarungan. Ang mga tao ay sumusunod sa mga batas na ito at nagsasanay ng hustisya ay dahil takot sila na maparusahan. Glaucon argues that people only do what is right because they fear punishment or condemnation. Kung ang isa ay makakakuha ng benepisyo mula sa paggawa ng hindi makatarungan at may kasiguraduhan na makakatakas mula rito, ay hindi sila magdadalawang isip to act unjustly. Ang sinasabing tanging dahilan lamang kung bakit umaakto ng makatarungan ang tao ay dahil wala silang kapangyarihan to get away with injustice. His argument now calls on the ring of Gyges, an invisibility ring. Sinabi niya na kahit sino man ang may ganitong singsing ay gagawin ang kahit na anong gusto nito kung saan natural ang gumawa ng hindi makatarungan dahil ang tao nga raw is unjust by nature. Hanggat hindi nahuhuli ang isang tao, ang kanyang pagnanais na gumawa ng hindi makatarungan ay mangingibabaw. At kung sino man ang tumanggi sa pahayag na ito ay nagsisinungaling, ayon kay Glaucon. Tagdag niya pa na uh, anyone who refused to be unjust and insisted on being just and good, even with the ring of invisibility, would be an idiot. So ano nga ba ang storya ng Gyges Ring? According to the tradition, Gyges is a young shepherd in the service of the king of Lydia. He was out with his flock one day when a great storm occurred and there was an earthquake that broke open the ground and created a chasm near to where he was tending sheep. Amazed at the sight, Gyges descended into the opening and there, among other marvels, he beheld a hollow brazen horse having doors at which he, stooping and looking in, saw a body of stature as appeared to him more than human, wearing nothing on but a golden ring on his finger. Guy just took the ring and ascended from the opening. Now the shepherds met together according to custom that they might send their monthly report about the flocks to the king into their assembly he came having the ring on his finger, and as he was sitting among the others, he chanced to turn the collet of the ring inside his hand, when instantly he became invisible to the rest of the company, and they began to speak of him as if he were no longer present. He was astonished at this, and again, touching the ring, he turned the collet outward, and then he reappeared, being visible. He then made several trials of the ring to test whether indeed it had this power, and it did, always with the same result. When he turned it inward, he became invisible, and outward, he reappeared. Whereupon he contrived to be chosen one of the messengers who were sent to the court, where as soon as he arrived, he seduced the queen, and with the power to go undetected, he then managed to conspire with the queen to kill the king and to take over the kingdom. Plato argues that the ring of Gyges, which guarantees invisibility and anonymity, is the only barrier between a just and unjust person. He argues that we would all be unjust if we had a cloak of anonymity. Injustice is far more profitable 
and we are only just because it is necessary. Ang sino mang tao na may katulad na kapangyarihan ni Gaijis ay parehas ang gagawin. Kung makakatakas lamang tayo sa mga krimen na naaayon sa ating interes, ay gagawin nating lahat ito. Ngunit dahil wala tayong ganitong makapangyarihang singsing, tayo ay umaakto ng makatarungan upang maiwasan ang mga parusa. The implications of the story is that being just is not fundamentally in our interest. It is something we do as a compromise because we cannot get away with injustice. In short, no one is just for intrinsic reasons. Finally, Glaugon is going to develop further his argument na ang tao ay mas magbe-benefit sa pagiging unjust compared to being just. He asked us to imagine, suppose that there were two such magic invisibility wings, and the just put on one of them and they adjust the other. So yung unjust man ay kaya niyang gawin ang kahit anong nais niya. Ngunit dahil siya ay may invisibility ring, he can nevertheless appear and pretend to be a just man sa kabila ng mga hindi makatarungan niyang ginawa. On the other hand, the just man must be just not simply because of the rewards that comes with being just dahil kung yun ang dahilan niya ng pagiging makatarungan, then he is not truly a just man. So dahil isa, siyang, isa siyang just man, siya ay dapat gawa ng makatarungan kahit hindi siya nakikita ng iba gawa nga ng invisibility ring para masabing just man siya. So ulitin natin. Para masabing makatarungan talaga ang isang tao, kailangan niyang manatiling makatarungan kahit walang nakakakita sa kanya. Gawa ng invisibility ring, kahit siya ay mabuti, ay hindi ito nakikita ng iba. That's why everyone will think this man to be bad and unjust since they never see him otherwise. Given this situation, men believe in their hearts that injustice is far more profitable to the individual than justice. Since we have two men where one who is unjust but seems to be just, the other a just man who seems to be unjust. With that, Glaucon's question is, who will be the happier man? This is supposed to prove that being unjust is always better because as he said, the life of the unjust man is likely to be happier than of the man who is just. Glaucon's argument is that the perfectly unjust life is more pleasant than the perfectly just life. In making this claim, he draws two detailed portraits of the just and unjust man. He said, and I quote, Let the unjust man be entirely unjust, and the just man entirely just. Nothing to be taken away from either, and both are to be perfectly furnished in the work of their respective lives. First, let us have the unjust man. Let him be like other distinguished masters of craft, like the skillful pilot or physician who knows intuitively his own powers and keeps within their limits, and who, if he fails at any point, is able to recover himself. Let his unjust acts stay hidden if he means to be great in his injustice, for the highest reach of injustice is to be deemed just when you are actually not. We must allow him, while doing the most unjust acts, to have acquired the greatest reputation for justice. And now we have the just man. Let him be just only, and he must be imagined in a state of life contrary to the unjust man. According to Glocken, let the just man be the best of men, and let him be thought of the worst. Then we shall see if he is affected by its consequences. He says, let him continue thus to the hour of death, being just and seeming to be unjust. When both have reached the other most extreme, the one of justice and the other of injustice, let judgment be given which of them is the happier of the two. With these descriptions of Glocken, Plato reacts and says that Glocken have isolated both as if they were statues. Glocken continues with this argument and says that now that we have a clear picture of both, we can now discover what awaits them in life. According to Glocken, the just man who is thought unjust will be scourged, bound, will have eyes burned out, and at last, after suffering every kind of evil, he will be impaled. 
then he will understand that he ought to seem only and not to be just. While the unjust man, in the first place, who is thought of just and so bears rule in the city, he has freedom always to his own advantage because he has no misgivings about injustice. In short, the completely unjust man who indulges all his urges is honored and rewarded with wealth, while the completely just man, on the other hand, is scorned and wretched. Glaucon ends his argument saying that gods and men are said to unite in making the life of the unjust better than the life of the just. In Glaucon's proposal, it implies that we are essentially self-interested and immoral. People act morally not because morality fulfills our nature, but because we have no other choice. The myth of Gyges illustrates what will happen if consequences would be taken away. Let us recall that the ring gave Gyges the power to do as he pleased, and because he had a chance to break the rules and get away with it, he pursued his personal desires. It implies that people will act unjustly in pursuit of their desires when unobserved, which according to Glaucon is a rational choice. Lastly, Glaucon's arguments in this book demand Socrates to support his claim that justice may be a source of happiness even amid suffering. That is all, and we hope that you enjoyed our discussion on the myth of the Ring of Gyges.